brother and sisters, reputed scholars um, of respective fields. First of all, I'm really honored to have been invited to speak before you and uh, share our experiences in the field with all of you. Uh, indeed, this has been very challenging and uh, very rewarding, but at the same time, very rewarding project. And uh, your brother Douglas has already introduced about the beginning of the, of the project. So here, I would like to uh, touch upon briefly, uh, I have many slides, more than 100 slides, but I would like to rush through these slides uh, and would uh, like to be as brief as, as, as possible. I have been allotted 20 minute slot, so would like to conclude within that time slot my whole uh, presentation. So, uh, by way of uh, introduction, I would like to tell you um, that uh, the, this, this category of monument, which we call <coughs> Step Well, uh, are most certainly India's one of most unique contribution to the world of subterranean uh, architecture. Uh, these are not known outside, outside the Indo Park subcontinent, and these are different from wells and step pond in concept design and overall treatment. Uh, they influenced many other structures in India, especially the ones that uh, incorporated water into their design. The precursors of uh, step wells generally in Indian context we know in uh, uh, we know the, that these uh, begin to be constructed after uh, turning turn of the Christian era. Um, but uh, we have a remote example. Uh, now in archaeological record, which was uh, discovered from uh, a, a, a site uh, of uh, Indus Valley time, which is known as uh, Dhalavira. So uh, this is a very simple, uh, uh, very very simple uh, um, construction. Uh, you can very well see that this uh, the site of Dhalavira again in uh, Gujarat district Kutch, uh, There is a huge uh, reservoir which is which is. Uh, 70 meter long and 20 meter wide, around 8 meter deep. And at one corner, at one as along one as we have got uh, a small step well. Uh, the, the, the concept of uh, step well starts from here. This is the close up of that step well. We can very clearly see there is a curtain wall which protects the, uh, the small water regime. And then we have got a small flight of steps to reach the water level. And this, uh, th these are the, the components of a step well. This is very interesting reference from uh, Indian uh, literature. Uh, we have Puranas, which are 18 in number. And this particular hymn or this particular verses is from Matasya Puran, which according to some, is datable from uh, 5th century AD, and it's a it's a beautiful uh, con beautiful um, concept. Uh, it says, "Das kup sama vapi, das vapi samo hrda, das hrda sama putro, das putro samo druma." Uh, we must appreciate that uh, uh, in 5th century AD, this concept of uh, conserving conserving and preserving the environment was very much a central theme of all their exposition. It means the meaning of this verses is that 10 wells are equal to one step well, 10 step wells are equal to one pond, and 10 ponds are equal to one sun, and 10 suns equal to one tree. So this is uh, relevant to the, con to the concept of constructing a step well. That's why I thought I must share this verses with you. So these are uh, different types of uh, um, water structures in our country, in, in India. Uh, the first one is uh, Tanka, uh, uh, tanka uh, which, uh, which, which has no articulation in terms of uh, uh, ornamentation and uh, salient features uh, have uh, that uh, it have arch spears which act as uh, lateral bracing and it prevents the lateral thrust acting on the side walls then water collected through narrow opening. Uh, then purpose was drinking water for humans 
and examples uh, its examples are found in residential buildings temples mosques everywhere almost everywhere the second is well uh, we are well aware of uh, this uh, type of uh, water structure and this articulation is limited to horizontal bands then it has got cylinder shaft and water is, is extracted through uh, reaching its surface uh, drinking water purpose is drinking water for humans animals and even for irrigation and these have been found since very early times of civilization in 3rd millennium bc we have got plenty of um, uh, plenty of uh, examples from all spread all over uh, all over the uh, all over the uh, places and sites uh, from where even uh, uh, the human settlements of 3rd millennium bc have been brought to light then uh, third category is wow or bauli uh, the uh, the uh, uh, point the the uh, subject of our discussion of my discussion today uh, it is uh, from simple to it has from simple to profuse articulation and uh, has uh, uh, religious uh, and secular iconography uh, this step well basically has three structural component a step corridor held by structural uh, cross bracing system both leading to water level and uh, circular well shaft sorry uh, Three three components. One is step corridor, uh, which was uh, which was uh, um, given strength by constructing pavilion in between. We will see in the following slides. And then uh, at at the rear end, at one end, the well shaft. Then uh, uh, this side wall. Its side walls rises straight from the lowest level. Uh, and then third, the cross bracing system uh, have pavilion as per structures. The this idea will be more clear when we come to slides uh, showing plants and elevation of the of the step well and the purpose is beside drinking water to human animal and for irrigation purpose it also served importantly socio religious and secular purposes so for example rani ki wow uh, which uh, marks the uh, culmination of the of this concept of constructing uh, step wells uh, at patan gujarat is it, this is the most uh, unique and outstanding example of this category uh, then we have kund um, which are from simple to profuse which has uh, simple to profuse articulation and have religious iconography then uh, these have these kund have two basic structural components a square a rectangular and successive uh, steps on three or all four four sides to reach water level then these kund uh, may have a small shallow recharge well within the rectangular uh, water receptacle uh, temp this these are associated with temple generally uh, meant for meant for religious bathing also may be used for drinking water for humans animals and irrigation and these are in existence uh, since uh, very early times of civilization within or outside the urban uh, civil, uh, urban or village settlements third is ring ring well which we generally uh, find from the historical periods onwards these are uh, small terracotta um, uh, burnt clay uh, rings which are uh, one upon the other and these are not very wide uh, nearly uh, 1 to 1.5 meter in diameter so they have no articulation at all and these have horizontal layers of successive uh, rings smaller in diameter as i said just said and these are found uh, these could these are found in association with the step wells uh, siltation chamber urban and rural settlement etc uh, the purpose is to allow the water to pass through them to ground uh, level and uh, uh, rani ki wow have got such type of uh, ring wells then uh, finally this talao or tank which has no articulation at all these are made uh, by using natural depressions fed by large catchment area and uh, the, it could have sluices to regulate gravitational flow of water and serve the purpose of sedimentation and uh, extent uh, might be defined with series of stone line steps uh, besides drinking for human animals and for irrigation uh, presence of ram animals some of uh, these uh, uh, ponds or tanks also have ram for purpose of uh, uh, animal to reach uh, up to the water level uh, we have several such uh, uh, talavs in, uh, in 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 gujarat uh, which is actually a semi arid area and uh, two 
uh, negotiate or to uh, to resolve this problem of water scar scarcity in entire uh, Gujarat, several uh, of uh, such tanks have been constructed. So thus, uh, the step wells and step pond generated uh, for use of water are two major building types that have quite different uh, qualities. While step wells are dark from their almost invisible from the surface, the step ponds are exposed to the sun, view, and light. In a step wells, a move down into depth is a slow unfolding of experience, exploring more of their art and architectural details. We have several uh, inscriptional evidences also. Um, won't go into detail. These are just uh, um, examples of uh, inscri inscriptions that we have found in Gujarat itself. Uh, but uh, coming down to the literary references, we have the earliest literature available with us. It is called Samarangan Sutradhar, which is 11th century text. And uh, it speaks uh, as to what should be the components of a step well from uh, simple to the complex one. So um, this uh, text also describes uh, suitable land condition where such uh, step wells should be constructed. And uh, these parameters include the geography, typology, taste, color, smell, sound, temperature, orientation of land, and various other parameters. Uh, the Vedic text uh, in our Indian tradition, we have uh, uh, presiding deity or guardian deity for um, for structures, for villages, for streets. And uh, since this uh, step well is related to the water for um, for drying uh, for, for drying uh, water from the uh, resource from the ground resource, uh, so Lord Varuna has been uh, uh, made responsible to be the presiding deity of uh, of the water. So the presiding deity of water or ocean is Lord Varuna. This uh, Samragar Sutradhar again has a clear indication stating that the west, west is considered to be the reason of uh, Varuna. Uh, uh, it, it is the most suitable direction for digging a well or constructing a water edifices. So this we have a concept of uh, Vastu Purush and Vastru Shastra. Uh, Vastu Purush is the god for construction of uh, structures and buildings, and Vastu Shastra, which is science of construction, architecture, is an ancient doctrine which consists of precepts born out of a traditional and ancient view on how the laws of nature affect built architecture. The designs of buildings are based on directional alignments. It, it is primarily applied in ancient Indian architecture, especially for temples, although it covers other domains including vessels, furniture, sculpture, etc. Foundation of Vastu is traditionally ascribed to the mythical sage Mamuni Mayan, a demon reformed by Tapasya uh, austericities in South and Vishwakarma in North India. This next slide shows as to how this principle of Vastu Sastra applies uh, to to, to various uh, types of buildings and constructions. Here in this case, the um, Lord Varuna, which is uh, encircled, on, lies on the, on the west. And in conformity with this concept, this is the plan of Rani Kiva, where you can clearly see that the stepped corridor, part of step corridor is on the east and on the west, uh, is this well shaft. This is the aerial view of uh, step well, uh, uh, Rani Kivao. Uh, so again, uh, our these uh, literary text they describe four types, four types of uh, water monuments in uh, Indian context. These are Kupa, which is a simple vertical well, then Kunda, which is artificial pond, and then Wapi, which is a step well, and then Tadaga, Tadaga which could be a large pond or an arch artificial dam. This is the ancient wisdom. Um, to harness the water and uh, uh, raise, construct uh, different type of buildings. As far as step wells are concerned, these are further subdivided into four main categories, which are Nanda, which is characterized by a single entrance uh, and, and uh, three pavilion towers, then Bhadra, which is two, which has got two entrances and six pavilion towers, 
then Jaya three entrances and nine pavilion towers, and Vijaya four entrances and twelve pavilion towers. After these four subdivisions, it is only Nanda which are which which were largely constructed. So uh, these were uh, constructed uh, within near a temple, uh, housing a temple within, then uh, within the fort complex, then uh, within the edge of a uh, of a village, and these could be also located outside the village along the uh, along the route or, or or trade routes. So throughout the historical periods, we find uh, we find the presence of uh, step wells which were constructed. So these are uh, various uh, uh, examples of uh, different subtypes. I won't go into detail. Uh, a slide showing uh, the distribution of uh, some of the step wells which were discussed uh, while this uh, nomination dossier for Rani Kiva was prepared for uh, uh, making pre presentation to the World Her Heritage Committee. And these are some of the facts about the uh, Rani Kiva, uh, its latitude, longitude, and uh, this is its location, uh, which is located uh, two kilometer northwest of Patan city. And then uh, status with the uh, Rani Kiva is presently uh, centrally protected monument by the Archaeological Survey of India. Uh, it was on tentative list uh, since uh, 1998. Uh, it is now uh, a world heritage site, uh, which was uh, inscribed in June 2014 this year uh, in, its, in the 38th session of the World Heritage Committee. Uh, which uh, held in Doha, Qatar from uh, 15th to 25th June. Fact sheet about Rani Kiwao. This is, uh, the, the total length is around uh, 63 meter. Uh, I have also given um, feet in the bracket. Uh, we in India, we use this uh, m meters, uh, meter second uh, system. Then uh, inner width of the step entrance, 19.9 uh, meter, outer width 23 meter, and uh, 21.5 meter is the depth at, uh, at its tank level and uh, uh, present maximum depth uh, where we generally find water table during uh, rainy season is 30 meter and the size of uh, this uh, tank is uh, uh, about 9.50 into 9.40 meter. Then the inner diameter of the well shaft uh, at bottom uh, is 7.10 meter, and uh, uh, inner diameter at top is 9.80 meter. Uh, it has also got a, a trough uh, which uh, was used to um, collect the hauled up water which was uh, used for irrigation purpose. Uh, this is the location you can see. Uh, this is close up uh, where this Rani Kiva is located. Uh, the Google imagery showing the location of uh, uh, Rani Kiva. This is the uh, slide showing uh, the area which we proposed for uh, uh, nomination, which is the, the nominated property and surrounding uh, area as, as buffer, which is uh, more clear in it uh, uh, for the purpose of uh, management. Uh, this is the plan I just show you. Uh, this is the uh, aerial photograph showing the surrounding area of the uh, of, of the step well, and these are different levels of the of this this uh, step well uh, Rani Kiva, which are in uh, seven levels. Uh, first, uh, this level one was constructed, and the construction uh, went upward. Uh, uh, excavation went from uh, ground level to downward till water level, and then construction from uh, ground from uh, water level till till ground level. So totally, it, it has got a total seven levels, seven levels, or you can say seven seven terraces, uh, gradually increasing in size and volume. This is the uh, side section of uh, of, of Rani Kiva. It has uh, different uh, features. Uh, we can see these uh, uh, this corridor steps uh, leading from ground level to the water level, and in between this. Uh, step corridor was secured by constructing pavilions in, in between the first pavilion is two story high second is uh, second is uh, uh, second was four and then <coughs> pavilion 3 and the last one pavilion 3 uh, is uh, uh, six story high and then uh, pavilion 4 is again 
uh, again six story high and uh, from pavilion uh, to western side uh, is located this uh, well shaft this is the front view of uh, the step well this is the scheme as to how various religious cultures are distributed and depicted inside the step well just see these slides show detail of these and this is the uh, entrance pillar actually the enter to the, to the step well was through a very ornate um, uh, ornate uh, uh, pillar entrance now the best part is gone only the base is remaining and this is reconstruction which is uh, which is copied from uh, one of the publications one of the old publication this is how it looks like as we descend down from the ground level to the <coughs> to the water level uh, this is another slide to uh, give you an idea as to how this whole step well from uh, inside was decorated with decorative pillars with religious sculptures and all these uh, uh, elements decorative element this is the fourth pavilion uh, the last pavilion of the step corridor this is one of the pillars to show you details of uh, uh, this uh, beautiful carving or intricate very complex carving uh, <coughs> this slide shows uh, uh, how it how this step uh, corridor looked if you see from the west uh, you can see this uh, the, the first uh, first pavilion which is, uh, where we we now have only the pillar bases rest part is gone and uh, below is uh, down below is second pavilion this is the uh, this is the this slide shows how the uh, sculpture of uh, sculpture scheme in one terrace is divided the basal uh, part uh, is uh, uh, the basal course is made of uh, repetitive uh, goddess in seated posture and then this uh, uh, median uh, band stone uh, these these are the uh, main area where uh, main deities are depicted and then at top of them are decorative elements which are known as uh, pediments so this is the coping stone so one of these sculptures at entrance uh, this is uh, lord hanuman this is a very famous uh, panel of uh, the step well which is known as uh, dasha avatar uh, so this is the basic concept of avatar different uh, uh, which uh, um, which probably we uh, we believe that the lord vishnu have got 10 uh, incarnations uh, beginning from uh, fish incarnation matasya then kurma tortoise and so on so forth this is the uh, uh, vaman avatar uh, uh, it is believed that lord vishnu took this uh, avatar uh, to save the earth uh, from uh, vices so in form of a cosmic uh, uh, boar uh, lord vishnu came to earth and then this is how he helped uh, help the earth this is lord buddha and uh, when uh, uh, buddhism also uh, got ascendancy uh, ascendancy uh, in the country so uh, it this also indicate at as to how lord buddha was also integrated into the uh, hindu pantheon or brahmanical pantheon so lord buddha uh, according to our traditional text is also considered as one of the uh, one of the avatars or one of the forms of vishnu uh, this on the, the, the slide on left is kalki avatar which is future incarnation which is yet to come and on the right side is a very popular uh, temple uh, temple theme which is, which is uh, called mahishasur mardani goddess durga is uh, trampling upon a demon called mahishasur this is penance of parvati there are uh, many mythological narration which this is sculpture depict won't go into detail of it in addition to main uh, main theme of uh, Uh, of religious uh, figures there are secular fig secular themes also which is uh, depicted by such uh, heroines or we call naikas uh, so we have several uh, such uh, depictions in this uh, step well rani ki wa this is close up of another uh, uh, naika or apsaras you can say 
this is uh, one of the sculpture of uh, Lord Vishnu. Actually, uh, Lord Vishnu is considered to have four attributes: Shank, Chakra, Gada, Padma means conch, mace, um, uh, these things, and on the basis of permutation and combination, uh, a particular attribute which uh, Lord Vishnu holds in his hand, there are 24 forms. So not uh, all these 24, fours, 24 forms are depicted, but uh, 15 out of these 24 forms are depicted uh, there in this step well. And interestingly, there is a set iconometric proportion to depict uh, this uh, sculpture, which is 1 is to uh, one is to uh, seven means if head is of one unit then rest of the body is seven unit uh, this this iconometry is called uh, uh, a, 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 uh, the measurement which uh, takes into uh, account seven total uh, divisions it's another uh, sculpture from the from the steppel circular sculpture uh, one more sculpture of Apsaras and there are several uh, such uh, sculptures. Um, why I have included the, this slide into presentation, will uh, I will uh, discuss on it later on. This is section of the step well. Uh, this is inside view, inner view of the well shaft. It's so intricately um, uh, they decorated with the such intricately carved uh, stone sculptures. They are uh, successive rings one upon the other and uh, these are decorated with the beautiful sculptures. This is the top half of the step well where we can have brackets and each bracket is again uh, beautifully uh, 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 or just decorated with the sculptures. This is the middle part of the well shaft. Uh, you can see this uh, concept of uh, Lord Vishnu resting upon cosmic ocean and uh, uh, there is a very firm belief that uh, uh, wherever we have this sculpture, uh, water never dries in that place. So this sculpture, this type of sculpture, have been uh, have been uh, uh, used in uh, many other water structures uh, with this belief. This close up of that uh, uh, Vishnu, that uh, sculpture, which which is known as Sheshai Vishnu. This is uh, th in this in center we have um, this is sculpture of Shishai Vishnu and in the surrounding areas uh, the other other sculptures of uh, Apsaras, Naikas, heroines, etc. Close up of the slide. Yeah, uh, in this step well we have uh, one of the earliest evidence uh, of. Uh, Preventive conservation. This uh, uh, this slide shows uh, a uh, bridge, a structure like bridge, uh, which is spanning across the uh, across across the length. Uh, this was meant to support the side walls. So the the, the uh, builders, while this was not uh, completely constructed, they realized that uh, now it has uh, got so much depth around. Uh, uh, this is 21 meter from the ground level, uh, 21 meter deep from the ground level. So that mu this might collapse. So, so so they introduced this bracing or this bridge structure uh, inside this step well to hold the walls uh, mm, in their place. In addition to religious sculptures and secular themes, we have also got these uh, geometrical designs, which. Uh, were very which very well uh, incorporated in a uh, local hand, uh, local uh, local uh, textile designs uh, which is called patola sarees of uh, of pattern so this patola saree is purely handmade one the weaving of one saree will take more than four or or six uh, six months everything is uh, handmade there and it is locally uh, manufactured it, so far it is not manufactured um, mechanically. This is to show you the comparison of Rani Ki Vau. On extreme left, we have the plan of Rani Ki, Rani Ki Vau and uh, on the right side are examples of step wells uh, which are uh, 
uh, which are uh, located on other parts of the country, but no one is nearer to the uh, to the step well in terms of its uh, length, weight, etc. These are some uh, international comparison to uh, to show that uh, these examples are nowhere nearer to the uh, to the Rani Ki Wa or Queen Step Well, as it is also called. So, these these slides, the, some of uh, these slides, uh, which uh, uh, give us or present before us the status of this step well before 1930. Uh, actually, this whole monument was buried under the silt of uh, of a river, which uh, which used to flow close by. It's hardly uh, 800 meter distant from this step well. This step well is located on the bank of Saraswati River, and uh, around the turn of 13th century, this step well, which was constructed in 11th century by a famous historical uh, dynasty, Solanki dynasty, by uh, Queen by Queen Udayamati. So this around the turn of uh, of uh, 12th century, this got silted by by the river. Uh, between this step well and the bank of Saraswati River, there is another uh, monument which is uh, which is tanked. So the whole area uh, got silted by this river silt. So these are the photographs of, uh, um, say, around uh, 1930s. These are glass this is, uh, uh, glass slides. This was this was the condition. Then ASI uh, unearthed this uh, monument. starting from 1960s onwards so uh, after documenting whatever uh, whatever we could uh, discover during the during its unearthing so 1964-65 was the first year when uh, um, uh, when uh, unearthing of or of clearing this the silt from this step well uh, started so all these are reported and uh, why we call that this was constructed by Queen Udayamati uh, here we have an archaeological evidence which was uh, discovered in course of desilting the step well. Uh, this is inscribed. Uh, you can see uh, at, at the at the at, at the base it says Maharani Shri Udayamati. It is written in uh, uh, in, in that uh, uh, Devanagari script uh, which can uh, very clearly be seen. Yep. Okay. Running short of time. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is uh, uh, in the year now. Uh, Mr. Douglas has already uh, told you about when it is started, and these are the these these pictures are of the year of uh, 2011 when we started uh, 3D laser scanning of of of, of this step well. So, uh, as a part of Sc Scottish Ten project, as all of you are aware. So these are some of the, uh, these are the, uh, this is the reality uh, caption method methodology which we followed. We, we uh, set up a control network, then we did long range 3D laser, terrestrial laser scanning with the help of Leica C10 terrestrial laser scanner, and then mid range 3D terrestrial laser scanning which we did um, with the help of Leica SDSS61616100 laser scanner. And then there, uh, in addition to that, we did close range 3D structural light scanning, then digital photography and video. Uh, then this is the summary that we get. And these are some of the pictures, uh, the result of uh, 3D laser scanning. Uh, this is the registered point cloud and CAD plan of Rani Ki Wao. This is the three, 3D point cloud showing colonnades within uh, within the Rani Ki Wao. And this challenging, this is high resolution uh, gigapixel SDR image of the step well. Uh, interior. The version here is uh, compressed for inclusion in this document. The full image uh, is, uh, is is very high, is of very high resolution. These are the section, and these this is the uh, 3D result of 3D model. This is a combined 3D model with registered point cloud of section. The combined registered point cloud and CAD section. This is unwrapped 3D model of well shaped of Rani Ki Wao. And uh, we also have got uh, in this step well uh, uh, sculptures. Some of the sculptures where traces of uh, polychrome are still existent. So this is 
the result of uh, th this is this is 3d model of sculptural element from rani kiva displaying original polychrome decoration and this is 3d model produced from high resolution close range scanning point cloud of sculpture with the shavatar panel so this is uh, this is the drawing extracted out of uh, that uh, that thing and this is the now with the available 3D, 3D database of uh, Rani Kiwao, the following future works uh, can be realized. Developing a website, second developing uh, more site interpretation material, then preparing virtual reconstruction of the Rani Kiwao to show how it would, would have looked when the wow was in use, then uh, developing various theme-based animations which could bring to life various myth mythological narratives but which essentially underline the sanctified finite uh, water regime at the place and then uh, uh, we should work for joint national international funding opportunity which could help realize above, men above mentioned objectives. So uh, this uh, 3D laser scanning of Rani Kiwao is just a beginning. A, a lot more is to be done. This is one of the best practices which, which uh, deserve to be shared with, with all. And uh, the, uh, this digi digitization help us in uh, working out the management plan for next uh, at least uh, five or 10 years. Um, which uh, I think, which helped us a great deal in securing this UNESCO tag in uh, this year's Doha uh, World Heritage Committee Summit. Thank you very much.